it's another mild day here in Paris. It's the middle of February and it's like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, I'm definitely enjoying the nice weather. I'm just walking over to Place de la Court now. Um, in the Tuileries Gardens, there's a museum called Le Mangerie. It's where Monet's water lilies are. It's super famous. Um, I've actually never been. So I'm hoping if I rock up without a ticket, the line won't be too long. Um, I'll be able to snag a same day ticket. Fingers crossed because the um, time tickets were already sold out. So we'll see if we get lucky again today. really lucky when I got here around like two o'clock there was barely a line I think I waited like five minutes to get in and I just came out and look at how crazy this line is now I've been standing here like five minutes catching up on emails and it hasn't moved once so I think I got like insanely lucky um if you can if you want to go to Le Angerie, definitely do the timed entry because the timed entry line you can just walk right through right now like there's nobody there um, the museum itself was amazing. Um, I think I spent like two, two and a half hours in there. It was gorgeous. Like the water lilies, 100% worth the hype. Go see them. They're stunning. Um, it what, did feel a little crowded, but like overall, you could still get a great you know, view of everything. There were places to sit and just take everything in. Obviously, tons of girls doing their little Instagram pictures. Um, since I was there solo, I did ask somebody to like help me take a cute one because I feel like if you're already there, like you might as well have a photo. Um, besides Monet, there's also a lot of work by Modigliani and Picasso and it was really interesting. Um, there were even a couple like lesser known artists, I've already forgotten their names, but also really amazing. Overall, I like, couldn't recommend it enough. Like this is a great museum. So now that we're done at the museum, um, I haven't eaten yet today. Um, it's like already early afternoon, so I'm 
heading over. I'm just walking through the Tuileries Gardens now, which is right behind the museum. I'm walking kind of like across and up toward the Louvre where um, Angelina is. They're really famous for their hot chocolate. It's very like Instagram famous. I've never been mainly because the line is always a mess. Um, but I figure today is a good day to just try it. Maybe I'll get lucky again since I got lucky the first time around with the other line. Um, plus I'm working on a post about where to find the best hot chocolate in Paris. So I figure if there was a time to try it and brave the line, it would be today. Hopefully it lives up to the hype. Um, I'm a bit skeptical because I feel like anything Instagram famous just tends to not actually be that great, but uh, we'll see. Here we go. <laughs> waiting in line because it was going to be over an hour but the amazing news is I still ended up getting Angelina hot chocolate and a macaroon so basically if you go near where the entrance to the um, cafe is there's a little cart they said they're there every day you can buy a five euro hot chocolate and you can also skip the line and go into their bakery um, it's just in and to the right, and basically there's tons of pastries, there's macaroons, there's croissant. Um, I was actually going to get a pan au chocolat to try because it was on my list of things to try there. But it just, it looked like it had been sitting there since this morning and frankly it didn't look very appetizing. So I skipped that and just went with macaroon and hot chocolate. So let's see how it is. It's really chocolatey. It's actually very good. Um, I wouldn't wait an hour for it, but I would definitely go back and buy one of these from the stand again. I like that it's not overly chocolatey. It's not overly thick. It's kind of like a good consistency. I'm debating if I should take the lid off to show you the color, but frankly, I think it's just gonna be messy, so I'm not going to do that. You can use your imagination or just go online and see what it looks like, but um, as you can kind of see, it's like, maybe, it's a nice like chocolatey brown. It's not too dark, it's not too milky, it's a good medium. So Angelina, I've gotta say, you have impressed me with your hot chocolate. The way to get into the cafe, not impressed. The fact that you're selling it on the street, making it easy to bring over to the Seine or over to the park, very impressed with that. Let me put the camera down and I'm gonna get the macaroon and we'll try that next. Okay, so here's their macaroon. They sell miniature ones or like a larger one like this. I figured like, I didn't really wanna get like one little one and to get like a pack, I think it was like 15 euro. This was just five euro 15. It's pistachio, so I figured this is a good place to start. If I like their macaroons, I can always go back and get like a cute little, you know, box with them in. But frankly, I don't know that anywhere is gonna be the area for me. So we'll see how this adds up. I'm not impressed. If you're gonna spend money on a macaroon, don't go to Angelina, go to Pierre Hermé, like, or even Montpre, like, it's better. But like, Pierre Hermé, really, if you're in France, like, 
those are the bathrooms to get. They don't really, I don't think they sell them at all stateside anymore. They used to be in one of the lounges at JFK and that was like the only place you could get them. Um, but I think after COVID they quit doing that. So if you're in Paris looking for a good macaroon, go to Pierre like that's top notch. This, it's just, let's see if I can like kind of show you. It's really kind of dry and just the cream's not that creamy. It's disappointing. I wouldn't pay for this again. Hot chocolate, yes. Macaroon, no. Angelina hot chocolate, go for it. Angelina macaroon, skip it. So I'm on my way to Pink Mama. Um, it's like a 15 minute walk from my Airbnb, which isn't too bad. It's like 10 o'clock now. My reservation's not until 10.15. I just got done dining at Pink Mama and I've got thoughts. I got there, didn't have to wait, got seated right away. The hostess was sweet enough to put me on the top floor, which is their most Instagrammable floor. Everybody wants that floor. So I was feeling like pretty good about it. The staff was lovely, everybody was in a good mood. Like you could just tell people liked working there, which is I think always a good sign. Um, so I was between getting their famous truffle pasta or their pizza. And I feel like the truffle pasta has been the one that everybody raves about. I was just watching a couple YouTubers um, the other day who went to Pink Mama and were raving about how amazing this truffle pasta was. So I was like, okay, like I feel like that's the move. So I got my glass of Prosecco to pair nicely with the truffle pasta. It came out, it was steaming. So it was like, great sign. It was the most disappointing dish I've had in a long time. Um, I think it was steaming because either the sauce had just been like, you know, quickly heated on the stove or maybe like something in the dish was like steaming when they put it in there. And it comes in like a, like pan. And I feel like the first tip off should have been, they didn't put anything down on the table to protect the table from what should have been a steaming hot pan. So either the noodles or the sauce was steaming. They put it into this like copper pan to make it look nice. Everything was lukewarm. Like even as I was like picking it up, I was like, okay, like the pasta steaming is like, yep, it's gonna be great. And blew on it because I was like, oh, like it's probably gonna be really hot. Lukewarm. Um, as nice as the servers were, it's France. It's hard to get anyone's attention here. They don't really like customer service isn't a thing here like it is in the US. <laughs> Thankfully there was salt on the table that kind of helped the pasta. It was just super bland. Um, there were a couple shavings of black truffle on top of the pasta and maybe this should have been another tip off. I couldn't smell truffle when it came out. Normally if you have freshly shaved black truffle on top of something warm you get a whiff of truffle didn't smell a thing. So I think either they're not storing their black truffle correctly or there's just like, I don't know, there's something wrong with it. No notes of truffle at all. It's basically a mushroom pasta with like what looks like shavings of truffle on top, but you, you don't taste the truffle. Um, 
And you know, I felt bad. I thought maybe it was just me. The people around me seem to be like having a good time. I don't think I need to turn here yet. Sorry, I'm trying to navigate as I talk. Um, so I ended up talking to this couple next to me who's from New Jersey and they had ordered both the travel pasta and the pizza. So I asked him, you know, was the pizza like worthwhile because the pasta did nothing for me. And the guy who had the pizza was like, you know, it wasn't bad. Like it's not New York pizza, but let's be honest, like nowhere does pizza like New York. He's like, for what it was, like the pizza was good. And then I started talking to his girlfriend who got the truffle pasta and she was like, thank God it wasn't just me. I didn't taste any truffle, even though you could clearly see there was some sort of shaved truffle on top of it. Um, so yeah, if you go to Pink Mama, don't order the truffle pasta that all of these YouTubers keep telling you is amazing because it's not. Um, probably go for the pizza if you really like want to go there, but honestly, there are so many better restaurants in Paris. I really feel like this is just a case of Instagram, like trying to make a pretty restaurant. And it is a gorgeous restaurant, don't get me wrong. It's just Instagram, like making a pretty restaurant popular when like the food quality is not up to par.